Martha Lane Fox. I am President of the British Chambers of Commerce and Chancellor of the Open University, which, as I've said before, are the two best jobs in the world, so I feel very lucky. Welcome to our podcast about skills in the UK. And I'm thrilled today to drill down a bit more locally and regionally with Alwyn Williams, who's come to us from Ambition North Wales. Brilliant job title. Yeah. Um, Alwyn, I'd love to hear what you do. He's going, we're going to talk a bit more about those regional differences and what we can do at a more hyper-local level to really address the challenges. So welcome, Alwyn. Do you want to tell us what Ambition North Wales is? I have my own personal Ambition North Wales, which I just described to you because I'm trying to climb Snowdon and raise some money soon. But I think that's probably not what your job is. No, I wish it was, <laughs> though. Um, yeah, so Ambition North Wales is a partnership, really. It's a partnership within uh, the public sector, working closely with um, the private sector to... Um, Invest that we're currently investing or looking to invest a billion pounds worth of capital in the That's region. A nice number to have in your Absolutely. pocket. Absolutely, yeah. So over the next fifteen years, we will create up to four thousand two hundred new jobs in the economy, um, and f- uh, two hundred and forty million of that billion is already ring fenced and being contributed by UK and Welsh government. Um, equally, so 120 million from each. And we have a portfolio of projects that we're delivering into key sectors uh, to create these new employment opportunities for young people and and, um, people in general within the economy in North Wales. Fantastic. Well, I'd love to, there's a lot to unpick in that we can come back to for a minute. But just to go a little bit more macro around the kind of Welsh landscape, not the actual landscape, but the business landscape, you know, the the numbers say that 75% of Welsh business leaders feel as though they're facing a skills crisis. Can you just tell us a bit about the business landscape and how you perceive the the differences in skills across sectors and perhaps a a difference according to the Welsh um, aspect of what you do as opposed to other bits of the country? Yeah, of course. And I think... Uh, Well, we've just conducted, interesting, our own survey in North Wales. Mm -hmm. So going even more um, deeper into what employers are saying. Um, And 70% of our businesses are struggling with recruitment Mm -hmm. and um, finding the right skills for the roles that they have. And would you say that's across the sectors that you deal with? It's across the sectors. So we targeted all businesses in North Wales and 70% said that there are issues Mm Um, that, and again, just sorry to interrupt you, but just to tell listeners, what are the key industries in North Wales? What is the, the kind of economic landscape like around you? Yeah, so we've got we've identified the key skills shortages, I think, but we look at them as opportunities as mm-hmm. well. Um, so the future skills we think will focus really strongly in uh, the green sector, so okay. renewable industries, and we see that. Um, you know, that key message is an opportunity for us because it means we need to continue to work with skills providers, colleges, universities to develop the courses that will provide those um, people to fulfill those roles. Um, the project management also has been highlighted as a, as a key shortage, I guess. And this is something we've felt and I felt particularly in my own team whilst recruiting as well. It's a very scarce resource, mm-hmm. and therefore that comes with, um, you know, a, an increasing price point for that skill. Um, so any project managers listening, move to North absolutely. Wales. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, and digital skills as well. Oh, what we're seeing is that digital is it. It's not specific to any one sector. Actually, every single sector requires people with um, digital skills, and that's going to increase as the years pass by. So there's a real focus in um, improving that digital literacy as well. Yeah, no, that's a huge piece of the puzzle. It's something that I've worked on a bit in my career, and you know, it's still the challenge partly is just this binary having skills or no skills, but then it's just ever-changing landscape in digital you know you might think oh I've just cracked and I sort of understand about social media and, oh my god now I've got to understand about AI and wait for it then it's going to be quantum and then it's going to be something yeah. else so it yeah. is just this constantly shifting landscape isn't it yeah it is and I think the added um I see it again I see an, an advantage in this for for Wales is we have our own language yes and Therefore, we need to, and we do, promote and support the growth of the Welsh language in Wales. Um, but it's it's about finding then uh, the resource that has the skill, but also able to either bring 
um, proficiency in the Welsh language or uh, able to and willing to learn the language as they go into employment as well. Yeah, that's a, a really interesting way of thinking about a competitive advantage, having a, a language. Um, just again, because we haven't talked yet in our series much about these regional differences within the UK. You know, when you think about Wales and the kind of relative decline or not economically compared to the rest of the country, just give me a bit of how you think about Wales and how it sits um, in the wider landscape of the UK and what we can learn from that sort of more specific local region that we could apply to other places. Yeah. Both I mean, good and bad, I guess. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, it's 20 years since Wales was... Um, uh, devolved yeah years this year yes I yeah. think I think it is and and we are expecting the announcement of the new first minister for Wales yes uh, which is uh, you know a generational yeah. change in the leadership of uh, government in Wales as well and I think that's really significant mm. as well as being the first black um, leader and first minister in Europe actually so a huge you know a huge advantage and something to be really proud of as a country um, I think it uh, gives us the opportunity as a nation to really get under the skin of what today's issues are mm. and how we plan and develop programs and projects for the future one of the I think one of the um, perhaps weaknesses in uh, working with government is that sometimes we fail to think long term enough. Mm -hmm. One of the things I think Wales has is a, a real focus on future generations. Um, so in 2015, uh, we had the Wellbeing of Future Generations Wales Act come in. Um, this and what is that? Exactly? Yeah, so it requires all public sector organisations to um, comply and, and work within uh, the Act, which is to really put in place um, and think about how we prepare for the unborn generation. Mm. What do we need to do now in terms of sustainable development so that we leave society in a good place for the generations that come up and behind us. And what kinds us. of things does that encompass? So it's about thinking, you know, climate change is probably one of the, I'm going to use systems thinking language. Yes. I am a current systems thinking uh, student with OU. Okay, very good to hear that. I um, I finished my math, so I'm oh, very much luck. looking forward good to that. Luck. But it's a very, climate change is a very messy problem. It's a messy issue. It's it's a global issue. It's, it's something that we all have a responsibility Responsibility to think about and I think what the future the well-being of future generations act does is really focus on sustainable development as an underlying principle of any capital um, development so for example the growth deal which I lead um, we will think about um, carbon emissions and biodiversity and ensure that the assets that we're investing in are assets that are as good as they can be and as clean as they can be um, for our future generations. So our legacy almost is being, you know, we're pushing for a, a better legacy for our young people of the future. That's a really interesting piece of uh, legislation, isn't it? I, I don't often hear about government's taking the time to really plan long term it's one of the things I think drives businesses quite mad is just this chopping and changing and not having certainty in the long-term policy so it's a really interesting insight and um, just to drill down a bit on further on that what is the um, generational kind of behaviors in Wales do they vary to other bits of the country and what does the workforce look like compared to to other places yeah so there's a really concerning statistic at the moment that we've seen you know, the trend developing post-COVID of um, inactive, economic inactivity in the labour market between the ages of 16 and 24. Oh dear, that's a bad one, isn't it? Because then that becomes It is. Systemic. Very, very worrying. Um, I don't know what the solution is, but I, I definitely think it needs focus now. Um, if you think about the situation that we are in in North Wales, where we're bringing over 4,000 new uh, employment opportunities into the labour market if we aren't able to um, target that 16 to 24 year old um, in the labour market then how will we fill those roles so I think there's a recognition needed that doing more of what we've always done is not working mm -hmm. I think Covid as a pandemic has also you know 
thrown a spanner in the works and, and it's a clear message. The trend, the increasing trend for me is a clear message that we need to think different, differently about how work appeals to young people. Um, when I was 19, I started working full time um, and haven't stopped since then, but it was very much um, a culture of going into the office. And so when I was 19, I was observing yes. leaders above me. You learned how to work. I was learning how to work. I was learning the behaviours, how to deal with people, how to deal with conflict and difficult situations, yes. how to present myself, um, how to accept and give feedback. And I think, you know, myself over COVID, I recruited so many people into my team over Zoom yes, and did. proceeded to work with them over two years in a very distance mm -hmm. um, and sporadic way because it was over the pixels rather than in a room together. So I think a lot of that informal learning has been lost. And I think young people are probably disadvantaged from that. Do you think that that's quite specific, you know, again, just to bring it back to North Wales, yep. is that something that you feel is quite disproportionate in your area? I don't think it's dispro disproportionate. I think it's um, systemic across the economy. It is a trend that actually last week I heard the CBI mm -hmm. note in a, an economic briefing. Uh, again, uh, one of our um, uh, lecturers in senior lecturers in economy and banker university again, re reiterated the trend in a, a presentation that I heard last week, at the end of last week. And I think it's across Wales, and I, I would be um, extremely surprised if it's not um, symptomatic in other countries and beyond as well. Yeah, I think, unfortunately, you're right. And well, there are so many benefits in some ways to having a bit more flexibility about where you work and how you work. Yes. I completely agree with you. Those first years are essential to be able to appreciate what work is, how to yeah. how to get good at it and how to get stuff done. I was really struck recently by an interview I saw with Barack Obama, who said someone was asking about advice for young people and what's the best advice to go uh, take forward in your in your life. And he said, just be good at getting stuff done. That's simple. It's that simple. If you're young and you can get stuff done, you'll get more stuff to do and then you'll get more stuff done and you'll get more stuff to do. And I really loved that. And I thought we've yeah. lost some of that sometimes in how we think about work and skills. And it's just so fundamental, isn't it? Um, just to come back to your billion pounds, because that really was an exciting number to hear on a podcast. Tell me a bit more about that, how you're going to deploy it, um, how you work in partnership with businesses and any examples you can give of businesses in North Wales that you, you might be working with. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we've got five key themes that we've identified for investment. Um, so some of them are targeting areas of chronic um, market failure and some of Such them... Such as, can you give an example? Yeah, so um, digital infrastructure, okay. I would say. Yes. Um, my background is in telecommunications okay. as well. So before I moved into local government, I worked with... So we both bang our heads about the broadband network in Exactly, yes. exactly. And um, so... Uh, a cr an area of chronic market failure, but such a huge opportunity yes. if we can fill the gap. Yes. Um, you know, there are areas in digital connectivity that just haven't been investable from a commercial perspective. In North Wales, we have a lot of rural yes. premises as well. Um, so that's one example. So digital connectivity is a theme within our portfolio. I'm so happy you said that. Sorry, I, I can't help but dive into it because it's a no. special topic for me as somebody who's worked in technology. But I think about this a lot. You know, I often have conversations with politicians, frankly, they go like this. But we've got, you know, we've got 90%. And I say, yeah, but that 10% is dragging down the 90% because you're never going to be able to really unleash productivity. Imagine if you are a, I don't know, a farm in rural Wales with zero connectivity. How are you meant to do anything from your tax return to finding new recruits to being able to engage in whatever other things you might need to do as a business? It's, it's so intense, isn't it? And I think we lose that because we sort of think, well, you know, 95% is pretty good, but it's the 5% yeah. is absolutely vital to enable more of us to get more benefit from 
from all of it, if that makes sense. Yeah, and the society isn't allowing us to no. be digitally disconnected anymore. No, exactly. And I, I'm a farmer's daughter in from a rural part of North Wales, and it's absolutely that. The yeah. farm is very rural, yeah. uh, suffers from really poor connectivity, but then my family are still expected to comply with, um, you know... All of the things you have to do. All of the things that you have to do to be compliant. Um, and, you know, I think... Post-COVID as well, there is an opportunity within rural areas for higher value employment mm -hmm. to um, to go into rural areas because yeah. of the ability to work from home. But if you don't have the ability yes. to connect and have parity in that connectivity from your home, then again, you are disadvantaged yeah. in the labour economy. Absolutely. And that's both skills and infrastructure, as you rightly Agreed. said. Agreed. So anyway, digital infrastructure was the first one. We already covered yes. one. We've got the other four. A um, bit of a hobby horse for me <laughs> as well, given my background. But yes, we've got land and property. Okay. So there are uh, sort of key sites and premises that just haven't been um, developed okay. over decades in North Wales and we're so generally occupied or unoccupied I mean is this a kind of unoccupied mostly um, some of these key sites can be viable commercially but need uh, core services put in uh, and just some public sector investment to intervene yep. so we're doing that um, we have agri-food and tourism, of course, yes. a key sector for us in North Wales. And, you know, the visitor economy is hugely important mm -hmm. for North Wales. And where do those visitors tend to come from? Educate listeners a bit about what your tourism economy looks like. I think, you know, less people from Wales travel within Wales as visitors, which yes. I think is interesting. Yes. If you look at Scotland, a high, quite a high, a third of Scottish um, visitor right. economy is, is Scottish That's people yeah. um, and we see less of that in Wales so people do travel across the border um, you know from che Cheshire yeah. and, and further connectivity between London and North yes. Wales as I've proved this morning is really easy <laughs> mm. as well two hours on the train uh, to use them from Chester which yeah. is very close to the border so um, and of course we have so many castles lots of history a beautiful coastline um, so there are lots of reasons to come and visit um, North Wales but what we're seeing less of is uh, the the um, pound per visitor uh, per day is it tends to be lower mm. so I think we need to develop uh, new attractions and maintain the interest in why people would come to North Wales if they've already been once why would they come back yeah um, and then we've got um, innovation in high value manufacturing okay so in northeast Wales mm -hmm. particularly we've got a, a long tradition and a long history of um, manufacturing can you give us some examples of some businesses yeah, so we've got um, businesses such as JCB mm -hmm. located in Wrexham. We've got... Famous Wrexham. Not the only thing located absolutely. in Wrexham. Absolutely. So Wrexham... Ryan Reynolds is located in Wrexham, <laughs> isn't he? I mean, he lives there now, right? <laughs> We're doing well. We're doing well in terms of visibility, I think. And mm -hmm. th there's a lot to be said about... Um, it's really interesting that as a case study, isn't it? What has been built in and around Wrexham. We also have... Um, and that is, again, that is a skills point, isn't it? Because what it feels to me as just somebody that's watched the programme, not deep in the knowledge like you are, but there's a skill around feeling as though the community has been given some power about itself again, isn't it? And people have been able to, you know, improve the environment through the football club and the, all the things that happen as the network of the football club gets more successful. It's, it is interesting. It is yeah. linked to skills. Well, football is a powerful yeah. machine, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I, if I had a pound for every time I've sat in a foreign taxi and yeah. tried to explain that I'm from Wales, but the minute you say yeah. Gareth Bale, people know exactly yes. where Wales is. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, in that perspective, what Wrexham has done really well is engage people through football. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it, you know, it's gone international. And, yeah. and we, as a result, we have a lot of focus on, on Wrexham and as a consequence, the entire region. Yeah. Um, we've got the Advanced Manufacturing Research Centre, AMRC, mm -hmm. located in North Wales. So there's a collaboration there with Sheffield University. University. Yeah. So um, it's not just about the manufacturing sector that's there now mm -hmm. it's about innovating with them uh, for the future so how can we drive in innovation into manufacturing so that we safeguard all of those jobs for mm -hmm. the future and make them um, 
more sustainable um, alongside sort of the changing environment and climate as well. Yes. And then we've got low carbon energy, a huge, Big, huge opportunity. Yeah. So in North Wales, we've got offshore wind, we've got um, power from tidal stream, and we've got one of the most powerful tidal streams, I think, in the top three in Europe. So there's wow, a, I did not realize that. Yeah, exactly. T tidal currents. Mm -hmm. So there's a and, and again, it's a very it's a space where innovation is mm -hmm. is just being driven and we're able to facilitate that innovation through uh, what we have in North Wales. Um, hydrogen, so the development of green hydrogen and looking at how we can really set North Wales um, at a global level as a pioneer in that space of hydrogen innovation um, and green hydrogen. Uh, particularly in decarbonisation of industry, but also more long term into transport yes. and decarbonisation of heavy goods vehicles, mm -hmm. uh, linking quite nicely with that um, with that uh, advanced manufacturing and you know the yeah. sector that you tend to see heavy goods vehicles operate within. Um, and then we've got. Yes, how many have I said there? Agri-food and tourism. I think you've nearly, I think we're nearly either at four or five. I've land and back. property, agri-food yeah. and tourism, and low-carbon energy. Yeah, yeah. That's it. You've done it. I mean, the, the low-carbon energy piece is really interesting, isn't it? One of the things I feel I've learned as president of British Chambers is just how much is going on locally in different places. You know, slightly different shades of what might be happening, but I feel as though we're still massively underestimating the potential opportunity here. Yeah. And I hope that the next shade of whatever government, not a political point, really sees this opportunity in the UK to drive the green economy and therefore massive increase in jobs in this sector. And just this is something I think we really do have an opportunity to excel at. I agree. And young people make much more values based decisions. Yes, very important point. It, and they want to work. So, you know, a, a couple of my team have really questioned um, and got, gone further than this is a job. It will provide mm -hmm. me with work and, and a, a salary is more than that. And I think that's um, across young people now that, mm -hmm. that are looking to make sure that the, the value they bring to a role is more it, it, it's in line with sustainable development yes. it's it's not adding to the problem that we have in terms of climate change and global warming and i, I quite like that i think it's challenging employers to mm -hmm. think about how they adapt their operating models and their businesses mm -hmm. to be able to provide those green jobs and you know this is a, a key message for skills providers as well yes. is how do we equip young people with uh, the knowledge and the skills they need to be able to apply that thinking mm -hmm. when they go into work and to challenge the status quo because mm -hmm. uh, we need that generational challenge I think as well. Yeah I think that's really important and sometimes I feel as though we give a bit of a bad rap to a young generation that they're somehow perceived as, as a bit lazy or wanting everything on their terms when actually they're facing some pretty intense headwinds and certainly the young people I meet are challenging us to think about those headwinds differently from the climate to the cost of living to, you know, whether they're ever going to be able to own anything, really. I mean, I think yeah. it's really intense what they're thinking about and how they're perceiving work in that context. I agree. And, you know, even down to things like how do they get to work? Yeah. You know, that thinking about um, all of the things we that where we want to get to is in line with what they want so rather than drive I, I know 17 year olds who are not really keen to drive mm -hmm. a car because a they can't afford it yeah. cost of living yeah. b they don't want to be adding to the uh, carbon emissions yeah. so what are we doing in terms of designing work and where work exists mm -hmm. with efficient and affordable and reliable transport networks mm -hmm. so they can get to work with um, public transport mm -hmm. and I, 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 I think that challenge is great I think it's helping us yeah keep the older generation on our toes and as we're all going to live so long we're going to need to keep being challenged by the whippersnappers um I mean just imagine yourself, I could totally imagine you as prime minister, but imagine yourself as prime minister and thinking about the way that this country works and operates. You know, it's so important to talk about the regionalization that we've had over the 
last few decades, whether it's through devolution or other different um, ways that policy has shifted. Do you know? Do you think we've gone far enough from your perspective in Wales? Do you, what can Wales teach other places in the country? How would you be thinking about this kind of central versus local challenges as a as a as a leader of the country when wow. you're a leader of the country? Wow, <laughs> what a question. Um, I, I do think you know. I think we've got. Um, we're on a journey, aren't we? I, I and I don't think you know. It's a continuous, again, systems thinking. It's a continuous inquiry and it's a continuous process of identifying what we do well um, and therefore what should we um, de keep developing and sharing and also looking outwards as well to what other countries are doing, how societies are. Um, building infrastructure in a way that leads to a more sustainable economy. Mm -hmm. And I think there is probably, and I know Welsh government do a lot of this, but, it, but perhaps what doesn't happen as much, and it, it could be an opportunity, is to really take those international lessons yeah. and bring them closer to the regions. Um, and we've had the restriction of COVID and the world basically stopped for a couple of years. But now I feel there's a, an opportunity to look outwardly, see how people have handled the pandemic, mm -hmm. um, what changes have been made through governments, how other governments are funding uh, sustainable development and how um, we can bring those lessons into Wales, but also share what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And I, I genuinely do believe that the one thing we've done right is implementing this future um, Wellbeing of Future Generations yeah. Act. It's been challenging. It's been a process of learning and it still is. Um, but it, but it's, it's put Wales on a platform that globally other countries are now really leaning in to see what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, and it will continue to be that learning process. Um, and it's really, it's quite exciting because it provides an opportunity for us generally, generationally to leave a legacy that hopefully we can be proud of. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I would want to do is leave employment in, I don't know, 10 years time and say, I kind of feel sh ashamed because mm -hmm. the generations coming behind me have a big problem still to face and they will because yeah. global um warming and climate change isn't going away soon um but i'd like to feel like i played an important role in negating some of the challenges yeah i've no doubt that you personally will do that but i think you've also kind of summed up brilliantly why often business leaders find it hard to invest in skills because it is going to be about the future in a way that sometimes the demands of the present can feel totally overwhelming, especially at the minute. You've talked quite a lot in the podcast about this, just about the moment we're in and all the headwinds that businesses are facing, big and small, but prioritising skills investment oh. very much locally, but also if you are a national business, is so fundamental in ensuring that, to use your words, future-proofing for future generations, isn't it? So yeah. I think... You've, you've kind of summed up the challenge, but also why the reward is, is so great and important. Yeah, and we also uh, probably should mention we have a regional skills partnership in yes. North Wales. They work um, within my team and we work, you know, hand in glove daily um, so that the roles that we are creating through our investments are um, being understood by industry but that the skills providers in the business sector understand what they need to prepare for yeah. and can and can voice their concerns about their own challenges as well. Mm -hmm. And the Regional Skills Partnership is a huge accolade for North Wales. They are a team, a small team of people um, funded by Welsh Government mm -hmm. who are so passionate about um, developing the right skills so that we can... Um, in Wales and in North Wales particularly, put ourselves out there and say, C come here and work or come home and work. Well, there you go. Well, you heard it here. That's a perfect note to end on. You have described brilliantly why we all need to pay attention to Wales, um, if not move there and work there. And any project managers, you've got an open job offer. Um, thank you, Elwyn. I wish you much success in your OU degree. You. Please complete it. I hope I might even see you on a stage to shake your hand and give you your certificate. It's been really interesting to talk to you and hear about the lessons we can learn from Wales. So thank you. Um, I'm Martha Lane Fox, and thank you for listening to our podcast. Thank you.